So I'm headed out right now on day one of a five day pack rafting trip. So I'm taking my pack raft out for about six miles, making camp the first night. Then I'll pack the raft up into my backpack. I'm gonna hike about eight miles through old growth rainforest right on the coast in the northwest corner of Washington State. And then I'll hike about 16 miles directly up the coastline of the Pacific Ocean. It makes like a big loop. Looks like a pretty good spot over there where that sandy beach is. Looks all right. Home sweet home. It is Tuesday night. I'm on a beach that's only accessible by raft. Sun's going down. Got my patented ramen recipe right there. About ready to head out on a five day trip. Can't complain. Ready to get out here and start shooting though. I didn't shoot at all today and I probably won't shoot tomorrow because I have a lot of miles to get in and I'm starting to get antsy to start shooting. But I'll try to just sit by this fire and chill the hell out. I'm sure once I eat, because I haven't eaten yet, well I ate at 5 a.m. but then I had like two energy bars and I'm in that mode where I'm not hungry because I haven't eaten for so long but I'm in like full zombie mode. So once I eat this which will be like 12 or 1400 calories. I'm sure I'll just pass out by the time the sun goes down. Pretty nice color in the sky right now. My encampment. So I need to get across this bay directly on the other side. The map says there's a trailhead and that cuts across that forest it's probably I don't know a few miles of forest six to eight miles and it drops right down to the Pacific Ocean the shore marker I just came from right over there that point is where I had my tent at last night the Olympic Mountains are that way. That's south. Yesterday, when I was rafting out, I could see Mount Olympus just sitting there. I was like, I cannot wait for this summer to get up in the mountains. You guys want to see a pro pack job? Here we go. <clears throat> pack raft on top. Paddles. Tripod. Nothing strapped to the outside, except the life jacket up top, which I couldn't store anywhere. That's a pro pack job. Initiating phase two of trip. Hike through old growth forest to the ocean. It's a really nice day in here. I'm surprised how warm it is for being the middle of March. These forests are fantastic. I was hoping there'd be a little bit more sun with some breaks through the clouds because it normally catches really nice light coming down through all these forests. And I would suspect that not many people travel on this trail because you either have to come way down the beach, which takes a few days, or you have to raft in, which requires carrying all your raft and stuff on your back. This looks like a huge wall of dirt, but it's actually a root system of a big tree that tipped over. Get up close to it you can see new trees will start to grow off the top of it and there's all the old roots. Now moss is growing on it. So everything back here just dumps back into the ecosystem. Everything just grows on top of everything else. It's a wild place. See some really unique stuff like this 
is a dead trunk right here. This just started growing out of it. Vines everywhere. Ferns all over the place. It's almost like any trail you ever see is just a tunnel through all of it. Most of the year, it's just cloudy and rainy out here because it's right on the coast, so tons of rain. But today is a nice sunny day. you ever get lost back in the woods and you're on a somewhat of a trail look for old cut logs like that that and that so that's where they cut the blowdowns if they ever maintain the trail at all so if you can keep finding those and stringing them together sometimes you can find your way back or at least get a bearing on where you might be almost down to the ocean I haven't stopped at all to take pictures today. I've been crushing it through these forests. A lot of times when I'm out here for a lot of days on end, some days I just won't shoot at all because I just don't feel like it unless I see something really good. And by being out here for five, six, seven, eight days at a time, I can be super selective about what I shoot. And I still end up coming back with a bunch of good images because I'm out here for so many days. So I don't have to constantly pull my camera out, which is nice sometimes if I don't feel like it. All right, so I found the first shot that I think I'm gonna shoot. It is these two huge trees right here, but I'm cropped way in as I'll show you in a second. And I was walking by this earlier and there was tons of really harsh light on it. So it was almost like a neon yellow in the leaves, which I didn't like. So I wanted to come back and shoot it now when it's no light on the leaves at all. So it's almost like a bluish green. So I really like close in crop of this. So I have a 28 to 300 millimeter lens on. Some nice light hitting those right now. And shooting with the Nikon D810. And I'm just gonna go through some basics here. This is a pretty simple shot. So it shouldn't be hard to capture at all. So basic composition, I'll pop it up on the screen. So now that my composition's all dialed in, I have it all leveled out, I'll dial in all my shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO settings. So this is a very dark scene. So what you'll notice when shooting dark scenes with live view is that you might see this exposure compensation bar. And if it's blinking right there, instead of showing you what the actual exposure compensation value is, that means that it can't take enough light in from the scene to actually give you a real-time rendering on the back of your camera screen. So if you see that happen, you can open your aperture to the widest possible value. So I'll just go to f over 4.2 here. And you can see that that's still blinking. So all it's saying here is it can't give you a real-time rendering of your settings on the back of your screen. So you're going to kind of have to do the best you can and just take a few gut shots in the dark at what it might be. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up my histogram first with my f-stop as wide as possible. And then I'm going to dial in the exposure first. So you can see if I hold down the exposure compensation and I go up, it doesn't actually give me that exposure compensation value over here like normal. So I'm going to go fairly dark with this one. I'm just watching the histogram here. And I'm going to go just off the back of my screen as best as possible here. So I'm just setting the exposure there using exposure compensation. I usually do that last, but since I can't get enough light in the camera, I have to do it before closing down my f-stop value. Next, I'll select the f-stop value. I'm gonna go with f8 for this scene. And my camera automatically cranks out a 2.5 second shutter speed there. So now I'll just take the shot there. And oftentimes when you're shooting sunrise, sunset, really low light scenarios, you'll see that happen where you can't actually get that live view rendering of what your settings are gonna to do to the actual end result of the photo. So I just took the shot, looking at the highlight blinkies, it looks like I still nailed the exposure. So if I go here, I can see that 
most of the tonal values of my image are in the darks or mid darks of the histogram. Nothing's blown out. But I could probably take another shot just for these very dark details in the trees, just to make sure I've captured all that in the final image and I could blend them together. So all I'll do here is I'll go from 2.5 seconds to five seconds. That is one stop increase. So I can just hold down my exposure compensation here and go up. And since I don't have my exposure compensation bar, I'll have to just watch the time. And that's why it's really key to understand stops and to be able to look at either ISO, f-stop, or shutter speed and know how many stops or what shutter speeds double or half to give you a certain amount of light in your image. So I can just push the shutter again. Now while that's taking, I have an exposure triangle guide on my website. It's about 9,000 words. And you've seen a lot of exposure triangle guides online. They go through like super basic stuff. I'm gonna teach you in mind my complete start to finish workflow and all the science behind how each of these settings works. So you can actually visualize it in your mind and you don't have to worry about having somebody teach you when you come out here. You actually know how the physical backgrounds of these realities work and it'll make it much easier to understand. So you can look at this shot. It's a little bit bright up here, but that shot was just to collect the dark details down here in the foreground. And I'll check out my histograms. You can compare that to the last one. See, I shifted it just right, which allowed me to collect all that information. Now I've set up a slightly different exposure here. Normally if I like a specific composition or area, I'll take a few different angles at it. So I'm just shooting it from a little bit further angle over. I'm gonna concentrate on this mossy tree right in there and that big tree in the background. So what you'll notice here is I've switched from aperture priority mode to manual mode. And I find that manual mode, at least most of the time, doesn't have that same low light problem showing the exposure compensation there. So what I'll do with manual mode is pretty much the same workflow, but now I have full rain over my EV scale. And I'm not sure why that is. That seems to be the case on the Nikon D810. I don't know if it's the case on other cameras or not. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna zoom in at 100% on that single point spot focus and use my back button focus there to dial that in. And if you'd like to watch my back button focus video and my complete focusing technique, I'll pop it up, I don't know, I think it's on this side that YouTube lets you pop it up on the screen. And I'll put it down in the description. So that looks good there. Next thing I'm gonna do, since it's low light, I usually select my f-stop now, but I'll select the exposure value using the histogram on the back of the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first increase the shutter speed and see how I can actually see on the back of my screen now. I'm pushing that very right-hand portion of the histogram all the way over to the right. Now I have a lot of green in this scene. Green blows out pretty quickly. It's a hard color to control. So once it's all the way over to the right like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to note my value on the EV scale, and then I'm just going to back it down about a stop in the final image. So currently it is minus one EV. I'm just gonna make sure it's around minus two EV once I dial in these settings. So next I'm gonna go ahead and put F8 for my f-stop value. Now you'll see when I put in f8, it dropped down to minus two and two-thirds of a stop. So I just need to increase the shutter speed by two-thirds of a stop to get it back to minus two. There's one-third of a stop, two-thirds of a stop. So that should be all right for this specific exposure. So if you're ever noticing that aperture priority doesn't have enough light for your specific camera, sometimes that trick will work. It does for my Nikon D810. And you can see that that exposure turned out really well. We will take a look here on the histograms. They're pushed all the way over to the right there. You can see that green is pushed all the way over to the right, but I didn't blow out any of the green pixels. But yeah, check out that guide. It will get you started on shooting all these different modes. I think it's key to learn in manual mode. I shoot with aperture priority mode 99% of the time, 
But if you learn manual mode, you'll understand every other shooting mode on your camera because you'll understand what's actually happening through the different methods and different techniques that you might use. So you can get that free guide. You can take it out with you shooting because there's a free PDF included with it. So I think that looks good there. I will check my focal point here, which I should have done before, but I didn't. That looks nice and stuff. I hear waves getting close. Oh man, I came on this trip with no alcohol and as soon as I hear waves and smell ocean water, I want to drink whiskey. It's going to be a big problem. There's the stream. I've been down on this beach before. I remember it was hell trying to get through here, but last time I came on this beach, I had I had hiked the whole way up this southern coast and it was flooded out here so it was a lot harder to move. The Pacific. Oh yeah, Driftwood City. Ah. Wow, it is a nice day on the coast. The Wilderness Coast. Last time I was on this beach, I hiked 60 miles from way down there the whole way up this coastline and the entire coastline is protected wilderness so there's nothing out here it's fantastic it's how stuff should be without a bunch of beach houses and 7-elevens darted all over it. <laughs> 